All right, welcome back. Okay, so I lied. Instead of going to the lead vocals right away, we need to take a look at the horns. I can tell you right now that the horns play a huge role in this particular mix. And it's the arrangement mixed with the way that these were tracked and the performances and everything like that. So we did ourselves a favor and we printed ourselves a, a reference in terms of the horns. Okay, so we have a plate verb and we have a room verb. Let's listen to the room verb first. Also keep in mind what we did in the last video. If I want to duplicate this, I can just basically drag and drop an instance of this room reverb, and then I can just basically flip and drag this over. Now this is a stereo print, so we're gonna go minus 180. That's gonna flip us around from back to right. And then our spread is gonna be minus 100. And this will now be left and right in the front. It'll go to left and right in the, in the rear surrounds. So if we now just click this over here, I'm gonna deactivate this room reverb. Now I'm going to just press play. I'm actually hearing that behind me now, which is exactly what I wanted to do in this particular case. If I wanted to increase this, Okay, but we're gonna undo that because we definitely don't need it that loud. So this is our quick and dirty way to be able to take a, an existing stereo reverb send and basically just duplicate it and turn it into a quad sounding reverb. It's the same bus channel. We're just duplicating the actual plugin instance on the effects return. And then we are just duplicating the send and flipping the pan around. So that's a really quick and easy way to be able to do that. So let me also listen to what's going on with our plate verb. So we'll take off both the room reverb. Let's listen to the plate verb. Okay, I like that. What did I end up using for that? Ah, okay. Good old Valhalla vintage verb. Um, what is this called? This is called plate verb. Let's open this up in the actual console. And if we go to plate verb, maybe we can take a look at some basics in terms of our panning. First of all, though, I would love to know exactly which instances are using this. And what is it? It is only it's only the horns, interesting. What do we wanna do with this? Well, we could just kind of like widen this out a little bit. So this is just the effects return of the plate verb. Okay, I don't mind that. It sounds just a little bit wider. So I think that's a good starting point. Okay, perfect. So that kind of takes care of everything. Now, the one thing I do wanna make mention of over here is I'm kind of in a bit of a pickle in terms of how I want to move forward with this because we have so many different horns that it would be amazing to turn these into like spatial objects or to do discrete painting on all of these. But I can tell you that there are a lot of back and forth went on with the client in order to get the horns sounding the way that they did. Also, if we take a look at the horns bus over here, we had an ADL 600, which is hardware that I was running. We had some compression, an Oxford EQ that was being doing a little bit of tonal shaping in terms of just sculpting the sound, but very, very minor. Take a look at this. You know, we got a low cut at 20, arguably that's not doing anything. And we have 0.61 at 4,000 uh, or 4K. So I don't think it's really doing too much. But if we take a look at what else is happening over here, uh, this was just noise reduction. The only reason that that was on is because that ADL 600 is very noisy. So I set it to just be applied in the beginning of the end. Other than that, I wasn't really worried about the noise. Arguably, what we could do is deactivate all of these inserts over here. And let me close the console for a moment and let's open up our horns bus. If we take a look at all of these, okay, let's now open up our console again, we'll go, Shift three, this will open up our console and I'm gonna go large view just for a moment. What we could do is we could basically deactivate all of the sends that are coming from here. And then we would just need to reactivate the room reverb over here. And then let me just double click to snap these. Keep in mind, we just used the stereo print to kind of dial in our room reverbs and our tone and everything. If I click, hold and drag this effects chain, I need to, first of all, make sure that I'm activating both the front, left, and right, and the rear ones. If we click, hold, and drag, just like this. Let's see how these sound being routed. Instead of going to the horns bus, we want to route these directly out of the main outs, like this. Even if we end up doing this as objects or panner, it doesn't really matter. This will give us the ability to kind of listen to these in context of everything. 
And then if I want to make any changes to anything, so for example, this one over here, what are we listening to? Trumpet left and trumpet right. If I did want to make any changes to these, then I could open up their respective panners and I could just quite simply make an adjustment to this one. We'll do the same thing over here. I'm widening this out. We could even push this even further, right? We could push this all the way behind us if we wanted to. So we have to kind of really think about what we want to do in this context. But at the end of the day, there's a bunch of different ways that we can work with this. Another option would be, let me undo those panning changes I made. Let's bring everything back to the way it was. And let's also click undo one more time. And we're going to leave these as going to the actual horns bus. In this case, though, what I want to do is instead of the horns bus being actually stereo, maybe the horns bus could be a 7.1.4 bus. And if we change the horns bus to a 7.1.4 bus, then we could basically, let's do this, let's get rid of both of these. I'm going to drag and drop the effects chain exactly as it is like this. And then now we don't need to send from the source tracks anymore. So let's deactivate this. And let me make sure that I'm not soloing anything. And now I can solo out the horns from the horns bus. Change our panning. Because we've changed our horns bus to a 7.1.4, this allows us to do things like, for example, I could do some basic EQ on this bus and a little bit of compression. So maybe what we'll do is we'll add an EQ. And on this, let's go with a, with a 20 dB um, linear phase EQ. And then on this, what did we have? We had about, uh, we had about like 0.6. And that was what? What was it, a shelf? No, I think it was a band. I'm, I'm basically trying to redo the exact same EQ curve that we had here. So we had uh, 0.6 dB at 4,000 hertz. Okay, so let's open up the Pro EQ over here. It definitely wasn't this. So let's deactivate this one. And it was right over here. And I want this to be basically 4K. And let's go to like, what did we say, 0.6. Let's just start with that. Okay, so we're basically redoing the same processing that we had, but I'm just using an instance of Pro EQ. The reason I'm, in, I'm using Pro EQ is because this will actually be applied to the whole entire bus channel. Another thing that I could do, which is super cool, is that we can use a stock Studio One plugin, so something like a compressor, and we can do some very, very gentle compression on this. So let's see whether we can just bring this in just for a moment. Okay, we'll do that one more time. I'm leaving this in place just in case I need it, but for now, I'm going to deactivate this. Now, the only other thing that we need to do is make sure that we're not doubling up on our horns, so we will temporarily just mute the stereo print. The benefit of doing this in line here in Studio One is that if I do want to make any changes to these horns, like if I wanted to take these trumpets or anything like that, now what I can do is I can go through each one of these. Now what I would probably do in this case is I have the Studio One remote. So now I have the Studio One remote active, and I have the ability to basically use a combination between making sure that I'm soloing out the different elements I need over here. Now I can just solo each one of these out, and I can move through and adjust the panning. Now as I'm adjusting the panning, I'm hearing things kind of like fan out a little bit. So I'm going to actually do this on the iPad because I find it a little bit easier to make these panning adjustments on the iPad. And I like doing them in context with everything. And we will now move over to this one. And it's a little bit of a back and forth, making sure that we have everything exactly as we need it. Perfect. Now let's move over to this one. Maybe this one can swing around to the back. And this one can swing around over here.
Okay, I'm happy with that. Now let's bring in these other ones. We have bones. I don't want this to all be around me too much, but I do want a little bit of a separation in between these over here. Okay, and last but not least, uh, for this one over here, maybe we'll stick to something like this. And then this one, something like this. And then last but not least, what do we have here? These ones. And this one over here. Let's move this over to about there. I'm just kind of guesstimating these. Keep in mind, we do have a stereo print and we also have halo up mix, but I want to get this kind of approximated. Okay, immediately much more immersive for me than this one over here, but we obviously have to make sure that we activate this. If we listen to this horns print right over here and we compare it to this one, Let's use that as a starting point because I think it's nice to have those horns panned out. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to tackle the lead vocals and making more sense of some of our effects. So we'll catch you for more in the next video.